Hello and welcome to INE's CCI Service Provider version 5 lab course. Today we will learn about OSPA version 2 authentication. For some of you who do not know me, my name is Rohit Pardasani and I would be your instructor throughout this course. I have five CCIs, CCI in Route Switch, Security, Voice, Collaboration and Service Provider. Now why do we need authentication? Well, control plane authentication is used to prevent unauthorized or invalid routing updates in your network. OSPF supports authentication, EIGRP supports authentication, RIP supports authentication, BGP supports authentication. They all support authentication to protect the control plane. Now, as far as OSPF is concerned, there are three different types of authentication which OSPF supports. The first one is null. Null authentication, which is type 0, which basically means that there's no authentication configured, or maybe you've configured it with null 0, or you've configured it with authentication null. The second type of authentication is clear text. OSPF supports clear text. So the difference is that in clear text, the password would be seen if you do a debug IP OSPF hellos or debug IP OSPF adjacency, you would see the, the, the password. It's in clear format. Obviously, it's less secure. Clear text authentication is type 1. <clears throat> and lastly, we have MD5, which is more secure than clear text. And basically, a shared secret is used to create a hash, which is included in the OSPF packet. MD5 is type 2. To configure OSPF authentication, there are two steps. Step number one is to activate OSPF authentication mechanism. That can be done either on the interface by giving the command IP OSPF authentication if you want clear text or IP OSPF authentication message digest if you want MD5. So one way to activate the authentication mechanism is on the interface. The second way to activate authentication mechanism is globally under the process. If you activate under the process, it activates for all interfaces, all interfaces that has OSPF enabled. The second step is to define the password. So the password cannot be done globally. It has to be done under the interface. The command to create a clear text password is IP OSPF authentication dash key and then the password. This is clear text. If you want MD5, then the password is defined with IP OSPF message digest key one or any number MD5 and then the password. This is a password for MD5. Now, OSPF also supports cryptographic authentication. OSPF version 2 cryptographic authentication feature allows you to configure a keychain on the OSPF interface to authenticate the OSPF v2 packets by using HMAC SHA algorithm. Now, why would you ever want to use a keychain? So if you use a static, let's say a clear text password or an MD5 password, I cannot give multiple passwords. With keychain, you have an advantage of doing keychain rotation, which means at a certain time, I could configure the router to stop accepting old passwords and start accepting the new passwords. So you could do a keychain rotation with keychains, which is not possible if I don't use keychains. So OSPF version 2 supports cryptographic authentication also, where I can define keychains. Keychain can be used by other protocols also. It's not just for OSPF. It could be used with RIP, could be used with uh, EIGRP. We could use it anywhere. As per RFC 5709, cryptographic uh, authentication in OSPF allows you to use HMAC SHA for authentication. Now, how do we configure that? Configuring with a keychain is different from configuring it as a clear text or MD5. Here, we first have to create a keychain. The keychain name is locally significant, does not need to be same between two routers. It could be different. The key identifier, which is the key number, and the key string must match. So here, in this example, I have key number one, 
and the key string is this is a sample key 12345. That's my password. The cryptographic algorithm that I'm using is HMAC SHA-256. The lifetime is optional. Like I said before, we could do a keychain rotation with send lifetime and accept lifetime. That's optional. Finally, you have to apply the keychain to your interface. That is done by going to the interface and saying IP OSP of authentication keychain and your keychain name. So let's try this out. Let's try authentication between router 1 and router 2 where I would do clear text between router 1 and router 2. So on router 1, let's do interface based authentication. So interface gig 1.12. If you remember, there were two steps. Step number one was basically to activate OSPF authentication mechanism. That is done with IP OSPF authentication if you want clear text. Step number two was defining the password. So IP OSPF authentication key and let's put the password as Cisco. The minute I do this, my neighborship with router 2 goes down. So let's go and check my neighborship, show IP OSPF neighbor. As you can see, I'm still neighbors with router 1, but my neighborship is going to go down in about 15 seconds. And let's do a debug IP OSPF uh, hellos and check what's the problem with our OSPF adjacency between router 1 and router 2. Now I am seeing hello packets from everyone except for router 1. I'm not seeing any packets coming in from router 1. Let's go to an unall and let's do a debug IP OSPF adjacency to see if we get some more information here in the debug. So here I see a message which says mismatch authentication type. Router 1 is sending me a packet and says that he's sending me a packet with as type 1 which is clear text and we use type 0 which is null authentication or no authentication. So I am configured for not doing authentication, but the remote peer, router 1, is sending me a clear text authentication request because he's using type 1, which is clear text. So I would have to go and configure this with um, authentication on this side also. So let's do that. So interface gig 1.12 and say IP OSPF authentication. So activate authentication mechanism. Let's look at our debug message now. Earlier I was getting mismatch authentication type because I had not activated OSPF authentication mechanism on router 2. But the minute I activated the OSPF authentication mechanism, now the, both the routers are using uh, type 1 which is clear text. However, router 1 has been configured with the password Cisco and router 2 has not been configured with any password yet. That's why now the message changes, the error message changes. It now says mismatch authentication key, which means your password is wrong. So let's go and add that to IP OSPF authentication key and let's use the password Cisco. Be careful with your passwords because a lot of times we have the habit of saying um, authentication key Cisco space question mark there's nothing and I hit enter what this what happens now is your password is Cisco space so be careful with that let's go back and re-give the command as the correct password the minute I give that if you see my neighborship with router 1 comes up and now my control plane is being protected using a clear text password The clear text password would, would, because it's clear text, it would be visible. So if I do a debug IP OSPF hellos and look at the hello packet coming from router 1 and let's also do a debug IP OSPF adjacency. I should see my password in clear text or if I take a Wireshark capture, I should see my password in clear text. Let's go and implement MD5 between R6 and XR1. So we have clear text between router 1 and router 2 and we'll have MD5 between XR1 and router 6. So for that, 
I am going to go to XR1 first and we will configure that. So let's go to config T, go to router OSPF1, area 0, interface gig 0000.619, that's the interface that connects to router 6 and say OSPF or authentication message digest. So I'm activating OSPF authentication which is MD5 type 2 and next thing would be message digest key 1 MD5 Cisco. That's my password. Let's do a commit. The minute I do a commit you would see that um, my neighborship between 6 and XR1 would go down, show IP OSPF neighbor. I have my neighborship with XR1, but in 17 seconds, my neighborship would go down. If I do a debug IP OSPF adjacency, you would see that my authentication or my control plane is failing. So the OSPF neighborship between XR1 and R6 would not establish because it's failing. What does it say? Mismatch authentication type again. The remote peer, which is XR1, is using type 2, which is MD5, and we are using type 0, which is null authentication, no authentication. <clears throat> so let's go and configure that. Interface gig 1.619, IP OSPF authentication message digest. This activates your, your type, authentication mechanism. This time we would not see mismatch authentication type as an error. We would see uh, authentication key mismatch. So now it says that okay, cryptographic authentication invalid or the authentication has basically failed. <clears throat> so I could just go and say IP OSPF message digest key 1 MD5 Cisco. The minute I do that, my neighborship with XR1 comes up. I hope this video was informative to you and thank you for viewing.